So we have all of the HD images of Gringotts and I'm going to go through every single one of them and give you my thoughts and opinions before the big reveal later today by Lego. Now, this Gringotts set, in my opinion, is absolutely fantastic, but I do have some issues with it. I've had a look at the images briefly, but I haven't seen them, like, properly. So it's sort of like a live reaction to the images as well, but I'm going to be giving you my deep dive analysis of everything I see here. So, first of all, we can see that Gringotts can display alongside the 2020 diagonal set, which, again, we knew about, but we can actually see a visual here. I think the scaling looks about right. Uh, Gringotts is slightly higher than the other rooftops, um, especially some of the smaller shops. Maybe it's a little bit too large because, especially when you look at the Deathly Hollows Part 2, the roof of Gringotts looks in line with basically every single other shop, but I'm not going to nitpick the scale. I think it looks great. Moving on to the next picture, we see the minifigures. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 by my count. Now, we have Bellatrix with dress printing on her skirt. That's fantastic. We have Dragon Maid to Spars. We have Grip Hook. We have Harry. No sign of the invisibility cloak. I don't know why we wouldn't have the invisibility cloak because that's a pretty integral part of this scene. Um, okay. Um, we do get two versions of Harry, uh, one for the Philosopher's Stone and one for the Deathly Hollows, which, again, was pretty obvious. We also get Hagrid for that Philosopher's Stone version. We have the two of the uh, Gringotts guards, we have three other goblins, we have a Death Eater it looks like, okay that's fair enough, and obviously Bellatrix will turn into Hermione Granger as well. On Saturday the 22nd of July I'm going to be hosting a Whatnot live stream auctioning over 150 Lego Harry Potter minifigures including two rare Ollivander minifigures worth up to $70 on sites like Bricklink and eBay. I'm also going to be selling nine classic complete Lego Harry Potter sets, a box of Series 1 Lego Harry Potter collectible minifigures, as well as some rare Lego Star Wars polybags. We have like over 20 of them as well. And that's not all, guys. On top of that, I'm going to be giving away four Lego Harry Potter sets including the Chamber of Secrets, the Whomping Willow in Shrieking Shack, the Hogwarts Room of Requirement, and the Hungarian Horntail. So if you don't want to buy anything, you can absolutely just sign up using my link and potentially win some giveaways. And you can enter the giveaways from anywhere in the world and you don't even have to pay postage either. So make sure to sign up using my special link, which instantly gives you £10 or $15 free credit for you to use in my live stream to get yourself some free Lego High Potter minifigures. Just don't forget to bookmark my stream so you don't miss it, which again will be happening on Saturday the 22nd of July at 8 p.m. BST. So, minifigures look fantastic. You can see a part of the Gringotts underground here on the right and the building on the left. I'm so excited to see this. Wow. That's really, really cool. Okay, so Gringotts looks to be in scale, roughly. We do have some other sections of the other shops. We have something on the left. What is that? Madam Malkins? I think that is. I can't really see it too well. It's kind of uh, hard to see. Gringotts Bank in the middle. Um, we have the iconic sort of slanted architecture, which I love, and a part of another shop here on the right, which is just a facade. Um, not really sure how I feel about that, but I guess it's sort of okay. Uh, we have the underground section here on the right with the minecart system. You place it here at the top, and it whirls all the way down, uh, two spirals to the bottom, and we have two bank vaults. And also, we are going to be getting a gift of purchase with this set. I believe it's going to be a Gringotts vault, but we don't have any confirmation on that. That's just the current rumour. Okay, moving along. Um, so we have a close-up of one of the vaults. Ah. It has to be said that the vault is very small. Um, I guess it's not too bad because it's just meant to represent, you know, you open a door and you can see gold inside. That's all you kind of really need. But I think if this vault, which is obviously Harry's vault, is small, but then the vault at the bottom is large because that's Bellatrix's vault. We have a, a key scene in there trying to get the Hufflepuff's cup. Um, then I think I'll be okay with that, but if the Bellatrix's vault at the bottom is as small as this one, then I'm going to have a big issue with this set. Um, I think the uh, actual rail cart looks really cool as well. So it's moving on to the next one. We have the interior of Gringotts, the lobby. Um, we have the chandelier. I'm surprised the chandelier is so small. 
because it's quite a large and vast chandelier when you look at the film. Um, but this looks great. Uh, let's move along now. So that's what Gringotts looks like. Oh, so that's how they've done it. Okay, so I was really curious because um, the rumour suggested, right, that Gringotts, the building, could display with the 2020 diagonally set, which it obviously can. Um, the problem I thought was that the 2020 diagonally set was on base plates, and if you know anything about base plates, there is no understud, so you can't put studs underneath them. So I was very confused of how they were going to attach the underground section to a base plate when obviously there's no stud connection involved. So what they've done is they've made a frame which basically allows you to like soft lock the Gringotts building on top of that and it's like it's not basically connected physically it just sits there and it's gravity doing its magic and I think that's a really really clever ingenious idea. Moving on we have another similar picture to what we saw before um, so she's looks like she's pulling a lever here. I'm not sure if that does something. I imagine because there's some um, some sort of mechanism here with the cogs that. Okay, yeah, I see what's going on. So there's a little technic bar beam thing. I'm not really sure what the exact name of that piece is, which locks this in place at the top. And you push that down. It moves the cogs, which then moves the bar out of the way, and then allows the minecart to basically go on its tracks. So that's really really cool. Uh, here is a close picture of the dragon. I think the head mold looks cool, but I'm not really sure about this build. There's a lot of grey, which um, I guess it's to contrast with the building somewhat, because obviously it's a white dragon and a white building, but it's a bit too much grey if you ask me. The wings look grey as well. Um, it's going to be a little bit awkward. So <laughs> it's absolutely huge. Also, her hair is grey. <laughs> but this is absolutely huge. I think a lot of people are going to display these two separately and obviously you can do that. I think they'd look both great displayed on their own or together. I'm personally going to display them together because I think it's just a really funky looking thing. It looks like a tree, <laughs> almost. Um, so that's what the back looks like. We have a bit of a waterfall. Um, I really love this table as well. <laughs> I really like that table. Uh, but the interior of Gringotts, there must be a better picture of the interior, I'm sure there will be. So here's some closer images of the minifigures, no leg printing on either of these. We do have dual molded arms on one of the goblins, we have some printed arms here and here, but um, pretty bog standard. Uh, so this is what Hermione looks like with the water droplets on Hermione and Ron and Harry. Uh, because obviously they go through the waterfall which removes their disguise and um, so that's Hermione's bag as well which I think is really cool I didn't expect the build to be like that and um, so this is the vault at the bottom oh no it looks way too small uh, is there a better picture of it um, yeah it has to be said that that vault at the bottom is way too small like the only thing in it is one Hufflepuff cup Really? There's just a Hufflepuff cup inside of it and that's it? Ugh. Yeah, that's that's disappointing. To be honest, I would have gotten rid of the like sort of facade buildings at the top. Do you know the buildings next to Gringotts? The uh, Madame Mao Kings and the other sort of wall building to the side? I would have gotten rid of those and then put in that piece count into making the vault bigger, personally. But... I have to be honest, that's a little bit disappointing, but I'm still in love with this set. Um, okay, so the uh, that's a more closer up picture of the interior. I do love the uh, stickers here for the added extra detail. Maybe they're prints, but they do look like stickers. Um, let's move it along. So, ooh, I'm not sure about the look of that dragon. It's very grey. Why is it so grey? There's barely any white on it. It's just the head that's white, effectively, and some of the like the outlining, I guess you'd want to call it. It's a grey tail with a white end, grey wings, grey body, white head. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that dragon. It's nowhere near as good as the Hungarian horn tail set from 2022, but I think it's acceptable. Especially when you display the dragon on top of that. I mean, your eyes aren't really going to be drawn to the dragon. It's going to be drawn to the building, and that dragon sort of complements that. 
Oh no, that sticker is horrendous. I know what they've done there. So, you see the sticker at the bottom? Oh, really? So it's it's two stickers, um, Gringotts Bank, but obviously it's across two pieces, that's why there's two different stickers, but that causes a massive gap in the middle. So it just says Gringotts TS Bank. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. I, I think if the problem is that evident, I think they should have just taken the L, spent a little bit more money and just printed that piece and just, you know, sort of dealt with it because I think that sticker is horrendous, or those two stickers, I should say. Ugh. Like, these stickers off to the side here, like, are absolutely fantastic. You've got, you know, little ones here, you've got one here. Most of the stickers in the set look fine, but this one here just sticks out like a sore thumb. Ugh, okay. So the back side of the set, um, we can see the interior. It has two floors on the building. We have a little bit of an alleyway here round to the back of the shops. I do really like that touch, to be fair. I think that's a really cool touch. The upstairs is very empty. Very empty indeed. There just seems to be nothing going on. But um, I guess that's fine because there's no sort of um, material for Lego to go off. We don't actually see what's in the upstairs of Green Gots ever. We just assume it's just more offices. But I would have used a bit more imagination. Maybe put a desk here. Maybe some like, I don't know, like a pot of gold or, or like a, a box of rubies or something like that. Just to make it a bit more colourful. There's not really too much going on here in the, in the upstairs. Um, I think the lobby is fine, honestly, and I think the the underground section is fine. There's a lot of exposed elements here at the back, but you're not really going to be looking at this set from the back a lot of the time, so I guess that's okay, but I think I would have put some more pieces here to make you know the rock work look a bit nicer. Um, and obviously the vaults need to be a lot bigger. Um, yeah, I think this looks fantastic there is a few issues obviously like i've mentioned um hmm. I, like i think a lot of people are going to have an issue with the, just the general proportions of this set but i really like it like if you just had gringotts on its own because i've seen a lot of criticisms of people saying we should just had gringotts um, as one set the building and then the underground section of gringotts as its own separate set and i think if you split it up um, I don't think it's as appealing, generally speaking, as a concept. I think the underground section of this build with the dragon really elevates what would what would have been like a typical boring old modular building to something special. And I think this is something special. It is a special set and is much better than the likes of the Bat Box or the Captain America Shield or the Hulkbuster or the Black Panther Bust or you know whatever's been coming out recently. I think this is really, really cool. Um, and it's definitely something special. So this is the back of the box. Compatible with 75978. I think that's a really, really good thing about it. So the uh, the emblem on the box is actually a galleon, which I think is really cool. Part of the um, collectible line, I think it's called. What's it, what does it say here? I'm not really sure what it says here. It's in another language. We'll see on the front of the box. Um, Hopefully we see the front of the box now. Here we go. Green Gots Wizarding Bank Collector's Edition. So the Collector's Edition is basically Harry Potter's version of the UCS, the Ultimate Collector Series for Star Wars. We have in this line so far, we have the Microscale Hogwarts Castle coming out on September the 1st, which is the same time this is coming out. We also have uh, the Hogwarts Express and we have the Hogwarts Icons. And that is it. Um, but yeah, this looks great. So 4,803 pieces, 18 plus, is going to retail for 430 US dollars. We don't know the price in pounds uh, or euros or anything like that, unfortunately. But um, I imagine it's going to be worth roughly 350 to 380 Great British Pounds and roughly 430 euros because the euros price and the dollar price is usually matched up pretty well. So that is my deep dive analysis of this set. Um, I think it's really, really cool. I think there's a lot of flaws with it, but nothing a few extra modifications can't solve. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you tomorrow for another Lego Harry Potter video. I'll see you there.